To watch these important lessons, subscribe to DP Education's YouTube channel right now. Click on the bell icon to stay updated on the latest lessons. Sri Lanka's largest free online school, DP Education. Hello, my dear students. Welcome to today's lesson. So, I am going to continue the lesson that is household electric circuits or domestic electric circuits in the previous chapters. We started off by discussing the different electrical appliances. Then we discussed power and energy of appliances. And in the previous one, previous chapter, I discussed how we can choose different appliances based on their electric efficiency and how we can conserve power. So now in this chapter, I'll be discussing home electric circuits. So when we say home electric circuits, we get electricity from the national grid. So there are electricity power plants which generate electricity that is distributed to the national grid or where everything is collected and distributed throughout the country. So from the national grid, which is the Ceylon Electricity Board, we get all the power supply to the households and the other different buildings. So there, in our household, we have so many different components related to the home electric circuit for different purposes. So since we use them, we are the users, the residents of the household, we use all these components, we should be familiar with them and we should know their function. So that is why we need to discuss the household electric circuit. So here, electric energy required to operate home electric appliances is obtained from the national electric grid. So from the national electric grid, we get the electricity that is needed to operate all the electric appliances. So here, of course, electric energy generated by electric power stations are raised to high voltages such as 132 kilo volts or 220 kilo volts using step up transformers and distributed throughout the island. So here of course initially in the power plant they produce electricity, they generate electricity. There are different ways that are used to generate electricity. You are familiar with the hydropower plants, coal power plants. So there are different methods. Wind mills that are used to generate electricity. So from all those the national electric grid gets all the electricity and from there it is supplied to the household. So while it is being supplied, there can be loss of electricity. To compensate for that and also to provide electricity to a large area, many number of buildings, they need to increase the voltage. So for that, they use a step up transformer. We will be discussing the function of transformers later. So there are step up transformers and step down transformers. Step up transformers are used to increase the voltage. Say from uh, 100 volts, the voltage can be increased to 220 volts. Increasing the voltage that is done by step up transformer. But again, when the current is supplied to the household, the voltage has to be reduced. So there we will be using step down transformers. So transformers basically convert the potential difference of current. To less potential difference to higher potential difference is done by step up transformers and high potential difference to lower voltage by step down transformers. So both are there before we get the electricity to the household. So from the national grid, electricity, the voltage is increased, then it is distributed throughout the island and in distribution sub-centers, then there are the distribution sub-centers. So we have the national grid. First we have the national grid. Then from there, 
electricity comes as 132 kilo volts or 220 kilo volts then from there what happens is it is given to subcenters electricity or distribution subcenters these high voltages are lowered to voltages such as 33 kilo volts or 11 kilo volts and ultimately they are lowered down to 230 volts so after this what happens is the distribution subcenters distribution subcenters here it is reduced to 33 kilo volts or 11 kilo volts but then again before supplying to the household the important thing it is converted to 230 volts so very important 230 volts and this current is going to be alternate current alternate current so alternate current which is written as AC and that has a frequency of 50 hertz. Now if you take current there is a direction for the current flow. If the current flows in only one direction we call it as direct current. But the direction if the direction of the current flow changes periodically then we call it alternate current. It flows in the forward direction, then the backward direction. So like that, the direction of the current changes within a unit time period. That is known as alternate current. And this particular frequency, 50 hertz, indicates how many times the direction changes in one second. So hertz, you all know, is per second. So when we say 50 hertz, the direction changes 50 times in one second. So the power supplied to the household has a voltage of 230 volts and it is an alternate current and the alternate current has a frequency of 50 hertz. You have to remember that. That is how we obtain current in the household. So there. You can see ultimately they are lowered down to 230 volts before supplying to households. Electricity provided to houses is in the form of an alternating current with a frequency of 50 hertz. So these are things that you need to remember. So there is the national grid that gets electricity from the power plants, ele electricity power plants, then the current is increased, the potential difference is increased to 132 kilo volts or 220 kilo volts. There it is the step up transformer. Then again when the current is distributed to distribution subcenters, the potential is decreased, voltage is decreased. So there it will be the step down transformers. So here if we note that as well it will be step up transformer then you will have the step down transformers. So that is used to reduce the voltage to 33 kilo volts or 11 kilo volts. Again from that also here again step down transformers before it is distributed to the household or before it is supplied to the household. So you have to remember these values. 230 volt alternate current and that is with a frequency of 50 hertz. That is how we get the current. So this is supplied by distribution wires and service wires. The service cables and distribution wires. So once we get the current to the household 
there are different components in included in the household electric circuit that is what we are going to discuss after this so with that students i am going to move on to the next slide so here house connected to the electric grid so in this picture of course you can see the components of a household circuit as well as the main cables that supply electricity to the household so we will try to label all these components the first one here you have now you all know this is an electricity post so you have the main lines that distribute current to the or electricity to the households so those are known as the distribution wires so here if we label them a is the distribution wire distribution wire so the first one this is the distribution cable that supplies electricity from the distribution sub centers from the distribution sub centers electricity is brought through the distribution wires so from there there is the cable b you can see here from here the main line to the household that is known as the supply cable so here it is the supply cable supply cable so supply cable from here to the household to the household up to component c is the supply cable and you can see the color of the supply cable that is black in color supply cable is black in color you all have to note down the colors as well you have to remember the colors usually it is a black color more uh, thicker that is the cable has a larger diameter compared to the normal conducting wires that we use inside the household so that is the cable that supplies power electricity to the household then that connection is given to this particular component c which is called the overload circuit breaker or the service fuse another name for overload circuit breaker is the service fuse so here component c is the overload circuit breaker another name for c is service fuse now from the name overload circuit breaker you can get an idea now all the components will be discussed individually again with their functions i'll be doing that but for now just for you all to remember think of the term overload circuit breaker now here to the household there is a power supply the current supply we discussed 3, 230 volts 50 hertz alternating current and the current is going to be 40 amperes that is the maximum current supply to the household if there is a current that is more than 40 amperes then of course the electrical appliances that are connected to the household circuit can be damaged so to prevent that and to protect the components or the appliances this particular overload circuit breaker is there if there is a current that is very high overload current then automatically the overload circuit breaker cuts off the power supply to the household so then the devices are the appliances are protected from high current from overload current so that is why we call it the overload circuit breaker component c or service fuse then from there you can see there are two cables a red color one another blue color one red or brown the other one is blue so two wires two conducting wires 
the red or brown color wire is the live wire and the blue color one is the neutral wire usually current flows into the component through the live wire and it comes back to the circuit now it has to be a complete circuit flows into the device through the live wire comes out of the device through the neutral wire so both wires are connected to the electricity meter that you can see here one cable then conducting wires so the next component is d electric meter or electricity meter now the service provider has to have a particular record of the electricity that is consumed by the household so that is one done by this component d electric meter or electricity meter that is the next one component d is the electric meter or we can call it electricity meter so that keeps track of the amount of energy electric energy consumed by the household then from there again you can see the wires red and blue or brown and blue live and neutral wires both are connected to component e now this component e is known as the isolator that is the main fuse with main switch so that is a component that belongs to the household now up to here component c and d up to that point the components belong to the service provider from component e everything belongs to the household the residents or the owners of the house so that is from the isolator isolator main fuse with main switch so using that whenever you need you can cut off the power supply to the household if there is a repair taking place or something has to be changed something has to be fixed then you can switch off the power to the household and carry out that process so that is done by the isolator or the main fuse with the main switch that is component e so component e is isolator or oh, here i will write the other name for component e main fuse with main switch again from that from the main fuse and main switch that is the isolator current or electricity is supplied to component f that is the trip switch residual current circuit breaker residual current circuit breaker or it is known as rccb or trip switch now this is if there is an electric leakage electricity leakage in an appliance automatically the trip switch switches off the power supply to the household that is the function of a trip switch or a residual current circuit breaker so component f is the residual current circuit it breaker r c c b or what we call as trip switch trip switch so like i said distribution wire supply cable and the two components overload circuit breaker or the service fuse electric meter or the electricity meter up to that all the components belong to the service provider so here up to this point all these belong to the service 
provide. The rest of the components starting from the isolator belong to the household or the consumer. Then, here you can see from this. Now we have the overload circuit breaker, electricity meter, isolator, then the trip switch. From there also you can see the live wire. There is a connection of the neutral wire as well. Now this live wire, if you look at it, the brown color wire, it goes to this point and gets divided into smaller fuses. Those are called the fuses or the miniature circuit breakers. Miniature circuit breakers. So from the name you can understand. The household is actually divided into different areas. And for each area there is a power supply. And each connection, each supply is connected to one of the MCB. Miniature circuit breaker. So if there is a problem with the power supply to a certain area, this particular miniature circuit breaker or the MCB or the fuse disconnects the power supply only to that area of the house. So depending on the areas you have, there will be miniature circuit breakers or MCBs. So G is miniature circuit breaker. G G is going to be miniature circuit break M C B or we can call it or fuses fuses now usually in the modern households the isolator the trip switch then the mcbs all together are they are inside a consumer unit now here of course all the miniature circuit breakers are contained within a distribution box now this particular box is known as the distribution box this is a distribution box distribution box so all the miniature circuit breakers are present in a distribution box so from the name you can remember the distribution box contains the mcbs which distribute current to different parts of the household and if needed they can disconnect the supply of current to the different parts of the household. So that is the distribution box. But in the modern ones the distribution box isolator and the trip switch together is contained in a consumer unit that is also part of the household circuit. You have to remember that. Then from there you can see from the MCBs, it is only the live wire going this way. Can you see that? From the distribution box, the miniature circuit breakers, it is the live wires connected to different parts of the household. Then here you can see this wire being connected to this part where there is a uh, switch, a light switch. So H is a light switch switch. Then there is another wire being connected to a plug socket. I is a plug socket. Now switches are usually there for both lights as well as plug sockets. You can operate them both. Normally light you need to have a switch turn on and off but plug sockets also come with switches. So Lights are connected to a circuit called the lighting or lamp circuit and the plugs are connected to the plug circuit. Plug sockets are connected to the plug circuit. So both of them use up different amount of current. Normally lights, the bulbs, they use less current. Whereas the electric appliances, 
they use more current. So because of that, there are two different circuits. So the lamp circuit and the plug circuit. So H is a switch connected to the lamp circuit. I is a plug socket. Then from there, you can see another cable. So we saw now also far the black color cable here, the main supply cable, then the brown and the blue cables, brown cable live wire, blue cable, neutral wire. Then here you can see another color, the green color cable, green color wire. That is the earth wire. Now if there is a current leakage, then from the particular device, the cover of the device, the casing of the device, if there is a current leakage, that current will be carried or trans sent to the earth. For that, there is this earth wire. So green color wire is the earth wire. So J is earth. Earth circuit or earthing of current with earth wire. Then there is K. K is this. That is a light bulb. So K is a light bulb. So in addition to this, you all have to remember, we'll be discussing the colors again. But for now, you will have to remember the colors. Red or brown live wire, then blue neutral wire and green earth wire. Neutral wire, earth wire and the, and the supply cable is black in color. So these are the colors. In the diagram also, you should be able to identify them. If we look at all the components again, now to the household, main distribution wire, a large, more broader wire, wire with a larger diameter, supplies current to the household circuit. So here B is the supply cable that is also a cable with a larger diameter. So the current that flows into the household, 230 volts, 50 hertz alternating current with 40 ampere maximum current. So that is given to the component C, that is the overload circuit breaker. From there, both wires, live and neutral wires are connected to the electricity meter or electric meter. From the electric meter, then we move on to the isolator. Isolator is the main fuse with the main switch. So like I said, up to this point, the overload circuit breaker and the electricity meter up to there, all the components and all these cables belong to the service provider. But from here, from the isolator, all the components belong to the consumer. So we have the isolator, then the RCCB or the trip switch. RCCB means residual current circuit breaker or the trip switch. Then from there, current is supplied, electricity is supplied by the live wire into the distribution box where you have the miniature circuit breakers or MCBs. Then from there, different wires, different connections go to different parts of the house. Here you can see a switch H. I is a plug socket and K is a light bulb. So here you can see from edge from the switch, wire is connected to the light. So from the light, again, a neutral wire brings back the electricity to this point. Same goes for the plug socket. From here also, the blue color wire goes there. Here you can see electricity flows back and the connection is given back to the trip switch. So that is a complete circuit. Then I mentioned to you all about the lamp circuit and the plug circuit. The lights are connected to the lamp circuit. They draw less current. The plug circuit which is connected 
to all the electric appliances are connected to the plug circuit where you have the plug sockets they usually draw a higher current so those are the basic components after this we will be discussing each component one by one i'm sure you will remember all the parts of the household electric circuit so with that students i'm going to move on to the next slide so here again we are looking at the components part of the household circuit so in this you can identify the cables here you can see the bla black color cable what is that the supply cable so here we have the supply cable then here you can see the red color wire and the blue color wire or the brown wire and the blue wire brown is the live wire blue color is the neutral wire so the first two components so the components on this side belong to the service provider so this side it is the service provider after this point it is the consumer from this point onwards i will write it here it belongs to the consumer so can you all identify the components what is this first one from the supply cable power is supplied to the overload circuit breaker so overload circuit breaker or the service fuse this is the overload circuit breaker breaker or what we call as the service fuse so when there is a no overload of current this switches off the power so cuts off the power supply to the household now here you can see when the lever is down now this is the lever that is used to switch on and off the overload circuit breaker now when the lever is down it shows as on if you look at the diagram clearly you can see it is off so here you can see look at these switches the initial set of switches you have to remember students normally to turn on a switch we press it down the lever has to be pulled down but here can you look at this if the lever is down that means it's turned off if you want to turn it on you have to push the lever up only when the lever goes up the switch is on so that is the overload circuit breaker then from the overload circuit breaker both wires are connected to the electricity meter electric meter or electricity meter so this is the electricity meter electricity meter now here you can see there is a like an indicator there that will keep on rotating and there is a particular point that is marked there so when that particular mark crosses a certain point that means we consume a certain unit of electricity so that will be shown in this display the electricity meter or electric meter so both of them belong to the service provider thereafter again you can see both wires are connected neutral wire blue color live wire brown or red color this whole thing is known as the consumer unit i told you all the, in the modern household this component is known as the consumer unit so here it is the consumer unit in the consumer unit we have different components this first one the first switch here that is the isolator that is the isolator then the second one 
is the RCCB or trip switch. So first one is the isolator. Isolator means main fuse with main switch. Then RCCB residual current circuit breaker or the trip switch. Then thereafter these small switches. Those are all MCBs. Miniature circuit breakers. These are the MCBs. All together is inside the consumer unit. The miniature circuit breakers, if they were together, that is known as the distribution box. But if they are present along with isolator and RCCB, then we call it a consumer unit. Normally, the modern households have this consumer unit. From there, again, you can see both the wires, the neutral and the live wires, both are connected to the rest of the components in the household circuit. So if you are given a diagram like this students, you all should be able to identify the components given there. From the supply cable, you have the overload circuit breaker, then the electricity meter, then the consumer unit having the isolator, RCCB and the MCBs. So that is the initial part, the starting of the household electric circuit and thereafter also there are other components. Now again I will move on to the next slide where we look at the circuit diagram of this and then we will discuss the components one by one. So here we have an arrangement of a domestic electric circuit. So the components that we saw before is shown as the arrangement of electric circuit. So here again we have the first component. Now again you can see L indicates the live wire. So I'll just write it here L means live wire and N is the neutral wire and you can see the colors L is usually brown color. In the old circuits they in earlier method they use red color. So we, this is the brown color wire and neutral is the blue color wire. Then like I told you all, green color is for the earth wire. So here you can see the first component. This is the overload circuit breaker. Overload circuit breaker. Overload circuit breaker. Another name is the overload circuit breaker or we can call it the service fuse. This is the first component. Now here you have to notice students only the live wire, the brown color wire is connected to the overload circuit breaker. So when the electricity is supplied to the household, if there is an overload of current, high current, immediately the circuit is disconnected. So here this particular arrow indicates the switch. If the, now the arrow is open, the switch is open, so there is no power supply. When the arrow comes and touches this point, then the connection or the circuit is complete, so current will be supplied to the household. That is how you have to identify the components. Then from there also, the live wire goes to this component that is the electric meter or the electricity meter. So this is the electric meter. Electric meter. Electric meter, electricity meter both refer to the same component. Then after the electric meter or the electricity meter here again you can see the neutral wire goes back to the main supply cable. Here also from the electric meter you can see another live wire, the brown color wire being connected to this component. Now what is this component? It is the isolator. So this particular component is the isolator. Now, in an isolator, 
you can see the brown color wire live wire and the blue color wire neutral wire both are connected there and here you can see two arrows two arrows so this particular isolator is able to disconnect both live and neutral wires simultaneously such a switch is known as a dual pole switch now it is different from this particular overload circuit breaker here there is only one arrow that is connected to the live wire only this is a normal switch and here you can see both wires are connected we will be discussing that again but you have to keep that in mind both live and neutral wires can be disconnected by the isolator or will be disconnected by the isolator that is known as a dual pole switch so there we have the isolator or the main fuse with the main switch then from there you can see the wire connection given to the next component which is the trip switch or rccb residual current circuit breaker so this is the rccb or trip switch residual current circuit breaker now look at that as well he also there is the brown color wire and the blue color wire live and neutral both of them can be disconnected by the particular trip switch live and neutral both can be disconnected by the trip switch so we have the isolator rccb both are dual pole switches both live and neutral wires can are disconnected at the same time so this is different from the overload circuit breaker then from here you can see there is a brown color wire live wire the live wire is connected to this point that is again distributed to the miniature circuit breakers so these are the mcbs mcbs those are the miniature circuit breakers they supply current to different parts of the household so miniature circuit breakers now here you can see the wires denoted as l1 l2 l3 l4 l5 those are the live wires so this household this particular circuit has five different areas to which different live wires supply electricity so the miniature circuit breakers then again from there you can see the power supply at the same time from this point you can see from here back again there is the earth before we come to that if you look at this component now these miniature circuit breakers the rccb and the isolator together what do we call that it is a consumer unit only all together is a consumer unit that is denoted by this broken line isolator rccb residual current circuit breaker or the trip switch and the miniature circuit breakers everything together belong inside the consumer unit consumer unit but only these the miniature circuit breakers inside this box that is pointed by that particular arrow it is the distribution box so there it is the distribution box distribution box so if we look at the components once again now here students i am repeating it again and again so that you become familiar with all the components the supply cable gives power electricity to the household so initially it is given by the live wire only the live wire is connected to the overload circuit breaker or the service fuse from there the live wire is connected to the electricity meter but from the meter the neutral wire comes out 
So then you have the electric meter or the electricity meter. Both of them belong to the service provider. Then there onwards after that we have the consumer unit, the whole thing that contains the isolator, residual current circuit breaker or the RCCB or the trip switch. And then you have the distribution box containing the MCBs or the miniature circuit breakers. All together is known as the consumer unit and the MCBs are present inside the distribution box. And also you have to remember overload circuit breaker, it's only connected to the live wire. Whereas the isolator and the trip switch, they are connected to both the live and neutral wires and they disconnect both live and neutral wires simultaneously. So they are known as dual pole switches. Then from there, if you look at the rest of the components, now we will take one particular line from one MCB miniature circuit breaker. Here you can see, look at this component, the live wire comes here and now it is supplied to a light bulb. Now this part is a switch. I will explain each one again later. Now here there is one connection. Then the same wire, it goes to another connection, another bulb. So there are three bulbs. Now you can see all three bulbs are connected in a parallel manner. And here you can see the live wire goes in a line like that. Then here you can see a plug socket with all three wires, live, earth and neutral, all three wires. And from there you can see the earth wire coming and being connected to the earth wire there. So E is the earth wire. Normally we use green color for earth wire. Then the blue color you can see the neutral wire is again connected like that and all the wires together come back into the distribution box. There are also you can see N1, N2, N3, N4, N5 for each miniature circuit breaker you have a live wire taking current supplying current to the components and neutral wire collecting and bringing back the current. So all are connected to the distribution box and the plug circuit, the plug sockets are connected to the earth wire. There we will be discussing about three pin plugs where there is the earth pin and the earth wire is connected to the earth. You all are familiar with that, you can understand that. Then look at this component. Now here, like I said, all these are connected parallelly and if you look at this circuit that part of the wire it goes like a loop or a ring. So this method of connecting all the components parallelly and this particular wire distributing current to all the other electric appliances or devices the bulbs and the plug sockets this type of circuit is called a loop circuit or a ring circuit that also will be discussed again after when we start discussing all the different components individually. So just remember this type of circuit where you connect everything parallelly it is a ring circuit or a loop circuit. Then like I said look at the plug socket now here you can see the plug socket here, live wire is connected, red color, the switch is connected to the live wire, the arrow indicates the switch. So when you switch on, it will be connected, current will flow in. Then you can see the neutral wire and the earth wire. That is okay. Then look at the bulb. Now to this particular bulb, there is a switch, only one switch, one connection, only to the live wire. So when you switch on, the arrow will come and touch here, the bulb will light. The same type of switch is shown here. Here also you can see one arrow, when you switch on, arrow is connected, current will flow, bulb will light. So a switch just with one connection, where you can switch on and off, 
with the same switch is known as a one way switch so these both these are one way switch one way switches these two are one way switches connected to the light bulb look at this bulb let's say a staircase now your house is on the first floor one of the floors so they are near the outside door outside the door you have a switch where you can use the switch to turn on or off the light for the staircase then you get down the stairs there will be another switch at the bottom of the staircase so there's one switch at the top of the staircase and one at the bottom of the staircase so you can use one switch to turn on the light the other switch at the other end to turn off the light so there you use two switches to control one light that is known as a two way switch so what is shown here is a two way switch now look at the connection there from the live wire there are two connections and two arrows so this shows one switch this shows another switch two way switch when both the wires now this is connected to this wire this is connected to this wire second wire now you can see this arrow is connected to this wire the second arrow is connected there when both are connected current will flow but here you can see this particular switch is connected to this wire this switch is connected to this wire now there is no connection between the two wires so that means the circuit is not complete switch is off the bulb will not light let's say we switch on we press the switch here then this wire this arrow will move on to this point the arrow will come from there to here so then of course there will be a complete circuit then the current will flow now when this arrow moves from here to here now you can see a complete circuit then current will flow but if you want to switch off once this is connected if you want to switch off from the top you switch it press the switch this arrow will move to the other side so alternately the connection will be switched so because of that it is a two way switch you can turn on and off from both the switches you can use the same switch to turn on and off let's say switch at the top of the staircase or you can use the switch at the bottom of the staircase to turn on and off or you can turn the bulb on from one switch and turn it off from the other switch that is a two way switch so you have to remember all these components now the arrangement of a domestic electric circuit is that clear to you so all the components you have to remember overload circuit breaker electric meter or electricity meter then you have the isolator residual current circuit breaker or the rccb then the miniature circuit breakers mcb mcbs are contained within the distribution box distribution box with mcbs that is the miniature circuit breakers rccb that is the trip switch and the isolator all together is present inside a consumer unit then from there you have the different circuits with the light bulbs the switches and the earth connection so these are the components and here you can see the two way switch and the one way switch connected to the bulb so here you can see the bulbs are there and like i said these are the ring or the loop circuit where the bulbs sockets everything is connected parallel to each other so that individually we can turn off or turn on each light and the electrical appliance so that is the circuit diagram that you all have to remember students if you all are given a diagram you should know to identify the components 
and you should know to label them and you should know the know to identify the normal switch and the dual pole switch and also one way switch and a two way switch and the different types of wires based on the colors as well live wire brown color neutral wire blue color and the earth wire green color so with that students i am going to end this chapter and in the next chapter i will discuss each component of the household electric circuit one by one to watch these important lessons subscribe to dp education's youtube channel right now click on the bell icon to stay updated on the latest lessons Sri Lanka's largest free online school, DP Education.